Rising unhappiness among young people has caused the United States and some large Western European countries to fall down a global well-being index, while Nordic nations retain their grip on the top spots. The annual World Happiness Report launched in 2012 to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is based on data from US market research company Gallup analyzed by a global team now led by the University of Oxford. People in 143 countries and territories are asked to evaluate their life on a scale from 0 to 10 with 10 representing their best possible life. Results from the past three years are averaged to create a ranking. Um, no, I've definitely seen people that have been happier than me for sure. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that goes on different in their lives and everything. And we go through different solutions and like all this and like all the time. So. Um, definitely people have been happier than me for sure. Finland remained in the top spot with an average score of 7.7 .7, followed closely by Denmark, Iceland and Sweden while Afghanistan and Lebanon held the bottom two spots with scores of 1.7 and 2.7 respectively. In broad terms, the ranking are loosely correlated with countries' prosperity but other factors such as life expectancy social bonds, personal freedom, and corruption appears to influence individuals' assessment too. The United States dropped out of the top 20 for the first time, falling to 23rd place from 15th last year, due to a big drop in the sense of well-being of Americans aged under 30, the report shows. Spring breakers in Miami Beach were generally happy due to their location but also mentioned the stress of inflation and how it is affected their happiness. I feel like life um, can be stressful at times and like I feel like here in the, the US it can, it can be really hard. Um, different, I, different people have their own situations. Yeah. But I think because of how expensive it, it is to live now and a lot of people depend on like their financial situation to make them happy um, and it's it's a struggle when you don't have the financial stability to like live so I think that's why because it's hard out here yeah. but especially living in New York it's very expensive yeah. high taxes you know work almost every day Miami's out of the week. Miami's expensive too. Everyone's and expensive like, now. You know, we're still here like trying to make the most out of it. But if yeah. you just take financial situations out of the picture, you could be happy if you're healthy. Yeah. You know, try to like do things for yourself, your health. That's where the happiness really comes from. Mm -hmm. I don't think just money may, will make you happy. So yeah. if you just take money out of it, yeah. you're happy. Well, I think inflation has, you know, made a lot of people struggle more, so that can't be true, but I don't know. A lot of people want to come here, so I don't think it's too unhappy. That's how I look at it. While a global ranking of the happiness of those aged 60 and over would place the United States 10th under 30s life evaluations alone put the United States in 62nd place. The findings are at odds with much previous research into well-being which found happiness highest in childhood and early teens before falling to its lowest in middle age then rising around retirement. I don't think we're to blame so much as uh, the system's kind of coming to a natural conclusion and we're ending up with a lot less of the opportunities than the previous generations had so we're going to be a little less happier. Some of the stuff that uh, has been occurring recently, especially with the political tension and climate, a lot of us, you know, um, a lot of us don't really feel a lot of hope for the future. A lot of us, actually, for instance, um, you know, when I graduated high school, I originally just wanted to leave the United States. I wanted to go to Germany. Um, the reason, uh, just like the political climate here, not just political climate, but also just the climate that we have in the United States is just not something that I think is healthy for a lot of us. I mean, a lot of us have to think about student debt in order to go to college where in comparison to, you know, countries like Germany or Poland. I find happiness through work and like reaching self-actualization and learning. 
uh, more so the material things, but that can't be said for a lot of people in the U.S. So me not having things is like a temporary setback more so than like what I base my happiness on. I'm a minority in general in a lot of things, not just, you know, my, uh, my color of my skin, my cultures, but also just, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm homosexual. A lot of, there's um, only been recently a lot of more push towards, you know, acceptance of this. And a lot of my friends, a lot of us have been on the outcast and the outskirts of uh, society in terms of uh, acceptance. So, yeah, a lot of us are more morbid about the future. Millennials and younger age groups in North America were significantly more likely than older age groups to report loneliness. While the phenomenon is starkest in the United States, the age gap in well-being is also wide in Canada and Japan, and to a decreasing extent in France, Germany and Britain, which all lost ground in the year's rankings. By contrast, many of the countries with biggest improvement in well-being are former communist countries in Central and Eastern Europe. They are unlike in richer countries, young people report significantly better quality of life than older people, often on a par or better than in Western Europe.